Howdy folks, welcome back to another episode of Super Hamster Plays Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, in this video I will be assembling two of the survivors, the story survivors that come with the base game. Um, as you know everything in this series will be using just the base game, version 1.5. Um, so here you can see we have the screaming antelope, or if you put it that way around, the hand. Um, sprue and we're not assembling the antelope or the hand we're going to be s assembling the what's known as the intimacy um, survivors so we have one male whose torso is up here and one female who's here and uh, the reason for that is at the end of the last video we started making some weapons and some armor for our starting survivors but I haven't fully kitted them out, so I didn't want to go ahead and build some rawhide and bone weapon equipped true, uh, models just yet, as I'll be adding stuff to it, and I don't want to build them and then have to rebuild them or modify them or whatever. So I thought I will start off with these two because they'll stand out. We've only got two models w equipped with swords and armor. So these guys have got a little bit more in the way of clothing. Uh, compared to the starting ones and they do come with the swords now in this case they're in the models they're actual steel iron whatever metal swords but um, it'll just help them stand out from the two starting survivors so they'll have a few bits of equipment that they may or may not actually have but they should get the job done um, and because these are what are known as story models they're designed to they're not multi-pose they fit together in a specific way um, and they're quite nice models I thought I'd go ahead and use the first of the uh, stone face bases so although eventually we'll be gluing one of these into there I'm actually just going to assemble it on these and I'll spray these and paint these black separately and then stick it all together so everything's a bit neater um, rather than last time when uh, they joined together and I had to paint that top lip and got a little bit on the edge and it wasn't I mean it wasn't bad you probably couldn't even see it from the video but I can and it bugged me so uh, yeah I'm gonna have a picture here that will highlight all the different pieces that we'll be using I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out using my clippers and then tidy them up a bit with my modeling knife and my files if I need to there you go my trusty needle files and then we'll bring them out with them all laid out and then we'll start putting them together um, a lot of the techniques that I showed you in the first assembly video will be exactly the same so I won't be going through those again in great detail um, so this one should be a lot quicker but yeah we'll get to the uh, I'll get all these pieces chopped out and uh, we'll get back to it. See you in a minute. Okay, so I've cut the pieces out. There are 11 pieces plus the base for the female and 11 plus the base for the male. Um, as you can see, the, the male's body, all the legs and everything are separate and the female's also has one separate. So that will be the first thing I want to do is stick those together uh, just so I've got something to attach everything else to obviously there's not a lot of point assembling his cloak and everything if there's no body to attach it to uh, what I haven't decided is whether I'll stick them to the base to give me something solid to work from or whether I will put them completely together or at least mostly together and then mount them on the base so I've got a bit more of an idea of getting them centralized but yeah so the next step you can see there it's I've cut it out just to show you all the pieces and here's the picture that shows you where everything is on the sprue the only thing that's missing is there was a piece across here uh, which was that one might have been that way yeah I think it was that way or that way can't remember which but um, it was such delicate pieces that I thought actually if I just chop the whole sprue out and then ping it off it take, puts a little less strain on the I think it was his sword actually that was attached here that was quite delicate so uh, as you can see it's a really really quite spindly blade I mean that's probably less than a millimeter thick so I thought 
yeah, chop this section out and then uh, that gives me a bit of play. Whereas if it's all held in the frame, when you ping it, all the tension goes into that blade. Whereas if you've already loosened this bit off, when you cut it and it pushes the two pieces apart, this bit's free to move about. So, But other than that, that's the frame. And as you can see, we still have the antelope and the hand, who are two of the monsters that we'll meet a bit later on. But yeah, I'll get these cleaned up. So we're ready to start assembling and then I'll probably put one piece to a side and we'll do assembly on one and then we'll put that up aside and we'll do the assembly on the other. So that's the plan going forward. See you soon. So I've been looking at some pictures of the female character online and you imagine she's fairly central like that. The sword comes over about so far and the cloak comes over about so far so her legs are fairly central so I'm going to mount her straight onto the base though obviously before I do that I need to attach her leg and the top of her buttocks um, are just visible and there's a slight dent in there and if you twist the model too far that way it doesn't quite sit right but if you get it just right it almost clicks into place which would be there but I don't know if you can hear that but that's the sound you want to avoid so it means you've twisted too far so we have some more on there Yes, as you can see, she stands fairly central. And now I've just got to find the right the right angle to get her to sit with her feet planted on a, a stone in just the right place, and I guess. That's about right. So, bit of the cement there, a little bit underneath, a bit on the base of her feet. And away we go. Cut it from all angles just to make sure she's straight. That's her sorted. Just going to put that aside at that angle so I can see if she leans one way or other as the uh, the glue's going. Next one obviously going to be to attach some legs to this guy. So we'll just do the dry fit just to make sure That one looks fine there. And oh, right the first time. And that one looks fine there. So yeah, so I don't think yeah, they don't actually fit in the wrong way. So even if you're not looking at his chest and the direction of his feet to get the angles right, you you couldn't really mess this one up. That sounds like famous last words, doesn't it? Only a complete buffoon would get this one wrong. Oh, I've got it wrong. Now, I'm not sure how much of his legs are going to be visible. on, Because he's going to have, he has a bit of a skirt cloth thing that comes around here. So I need to make sure that I get everything lined up. So although you can't get the wrong leg on the wrong leg, it doesn't make sense, but it does, uh, you could get the angles wrong. I have one too far forward or too far back, which would leave effectively one of the crease lines or the mould lines that uh, you're normally trying to avoid by cleaning them up and scraping them off. So 
we'll do a bit of this just to, to mould those in and then we'll move on to the other leg Gotta be careful now not to touch the area of his leg where I've just put all that cement because it's very soft. Yeah, that seems about right. And then we'll just apply a little bit on there to smooth out the edges so I can see a bit better. Tiny crease. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. So. Uh, I don't think he's quite so central, so I'm not going to mount him just yet. So we'll give these guys a few minutes to uh, harden off and uh, set, and then we'll move on to the next step. Right. Uh, as you can see back here, I changed my mind. I did a bit more studying and worked out where I want that figure for the male uh, to be so he's ever so slightly off to one side but not significantly and that lid is just there because he actually wants to lean a lot forward so that's just there holding him up whilst the, uh, the glue sets so we're back here. Uh, these are the three pieces I'll be doing next. This large piece of skirt um, is for the back. I'll get to that one in a minute. This is her bikini top, which fits in pretty straightforward. And this long tasty bit, not to be confused with the really skinny piece, which I think is her hair. This one is definitely cloth. And I spent ages, there's a there's a groove in like the top of her thigh. And I spent ages trying to fit it in and then realized I had the piece upside down. And that slots in there. And when you get it in just the right place, uh, the pieces actually connect all the way along. All the way along uh, this piece here. And turn it into uh, just a bit, of, bit more of a three-dimensional piece. So... That's next, although uh, that's round enough. So yeah, so quick splash in that groove. And then we're gonna go the full length and move slowly over to the top. Now I don't need a huge amount of cement at this point because it's almost gonna hold itself uh, this one I'm going to use tweezers just to hold it out of the way because I don't want to get thumbprints or fingerprints um, on this piece at all being so small so let's see if we can do this with the tweezers yes yes we can and I'm just going to use my nail to prod and poke. As you can see, that's joined all the way along there. And just to give it a bit more joint, a bit more of a, a seal, let's just run that across the top and let the glue get pulled in. So that's given her a bit more depth. She was quite a flat figure before. I want to say she's got a flat physique, but it was a bit two-dimensional that's the word I was looking for and now it's a bit more three-dimensional now if you look at the rear you can see her rear uh, but we're actually going to cover that up now and this piece sort of if you're coming up from the top it stops as soon as it hits the other the fold of the uh, cloth at the back so 
again. Pardon me, my lady. Quick splash of cement across her buttocks. Down that side. Again, this is really just to hold it in place. And once we've got it um, a bit more centralized, we'll go over the joints with the, the glue after the fact. There you go. Again, a bit more depth. And that base isn't quite set, so I have to be a bit careful with that one. But again, run that across there and let it seal up the joints and where it joins under there. So there we go. where her feet join and it's not a particularly great joint so we'll just get some stuff under there I'm going to stand a bit more uh, the bikini top if you sort of lay it flat there's yeah, it's that shaped but one side comes up a lot higher than the other that's the side that tucks down under her arm and joins that strap around the back and I've already dry fitted this one so again it's just a splash of glue or a splash of cement across there and yeah it joins under that arm and then it joins under that arm and we'll set her aside and leave her to dry for a bit now onto the skirt for the male uh, it's actually made up of Two pieces but as you can see I've got three here these two look very similar from far back where the camera is up here the difference is one of them has a necklace on and funnily enough that goes around his neck so we'll get rid of that one um, this small piece sits over there or under there just in the top or underneath his uh, cod piece and the other one fits around the back and when we get to doing that it just slots into place quite happily so, and they wrap a little bit around the side so. good catch Again, this is really just a little bit to hold it in place and then we'll do the rest once it's there by going over the uh, the join and just letting the cement flow into the gap. Yeah, the rear piece uh, you can see it flows that way into that point. If you hold it by the point, it actually comes around quite a far away from the model. So you can get in there. And if you look carefully, there's two divots, which I'm guessing is going to line up with his buttocks. So again, don't need a huge amount. It's just really to hold it in place. And then once it's a bit more set, We'll go in and seal the join. It might have been better in hindsight, 
to do the uh, the back one first as the front one goes over the top of it but fortunately because we're using the contact cement um, polystyrene cement it, the joint's still soft enough that I could just sort of squeeze it underneath but yeah that all looks looks pretty good Trying to work out where the joint is on the inside. And we'll splash a little glue, a little cement rather in there. You may recall there was a tiny little piece, I don't know, maybe two millimeters long. And I've been trying to work it out, and I was pretty sure that it fits in this tiny slot here. Um, as if the sort of the strap is there's like a loose tie on the strap well that particular piece pinged out of my tweezers and shot off into no man's land somewhere on my floor and i've just spent 20 minutes looking for it and given up so this it's two maybe three millimeters long by one millimeter across it is tiny so i'm gonna have to just fill that hole now right, it's so small and I'm hoping I'm not going to need to do it with green stuff or even liquid green stuff. So I've just got a little piece from this stuff, all the little shavings, and found a fairly squarish piece. And I'm just going to stick it in the hole. And I've dry fitted it and trimmed it a bit so that it fits nicely. But basically, yeah, it's just a tiny scrap of sprue. is slightly longer than it is wider and yeah I'm just going to stick it in that hole and when it's all hardened off I will trim it back with a knife and then hopefully the paint will hide the joins and so forth so I'll say this stuff basically melts the glue so I'm hoping I can squash it down into place in fact looking at it I may not even need to trim that that's that's filled that gap quite nicely as you can see there's a bit of the melted glue just scrape that off and we'll just go over that smooth out the edges job done bit of a shame but there you go on the other shoulder there's a little notch I'm just gonna get that wet and across her back and that would be this roughly triangular shaped piece of cloth cloak whatever you want to call it and it has a little notch so when you get it in the right place it pretty much just clicks in which again gives her a bit of three dimensions by giving her a bit of a cape three pieces of hair that's the top piece that's a bit of a ponytail that comes out the back of one of these but one of them on the inside as a hand and that hand is the end of that arm there so this piece sits it's also got a flat piece there and a flat piece there and that sits in that sort of section there so that'll be the next one They say uh, Kingdom Death is a game that will give you nightmares. They're not just talking about the game itself, but how to actually put some of these models together. Because who thought it was a good idea to have a head that's made up of four pieces on a true scale model? Because that's a truly terrifying. over a hedge 
Yeah, just a little bit. Ironically, I don't even know why they bothered putting the hand in, because you're not going to see it. And then this piece will go over there and fill in a bit more of her hair. And then that ponytail, there's another little notch just here that that ponytail will sit in and it'll drape over the two and pretty much just hide the join. So again, let's get the back. And there's a few flat pieces and panels and things. And if you get it in the right place, it's just going to slot in and almost click into place. Like. Like so. It does leave a bit of a gap down there, but that is exactly where that's going to sit. So we'll just do that and finish it all off in one hit. Again, just be careful where you put your fingers once you start using this glue because you'll end up leaving thumbprints everywhere. Again, hide the joins. As you can see, if you look at her straight on, she's quite lopsided, but the sword's going to be coming over this way a bit, so that should balance things out. And I'm not sure about that long piece of hair. I might have a fiddle with that in a minute. I'm just not happy with the way... I think that is the way it's supposed to go. It just it doesn't seem to flow with the rest of it. Everything else is flowing to the side, and that one piece is going almost straight back, so yeah, I'll have a fiddle with that, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so uh, yeah, I did a bit more fiddling, and the two halves, big halves of her hair actually pushed round a bit more, and that gap is filled in, and I don't think this piece is to cover it. So with a bit more adjusting, it's there going basically across the top. But in doing so, I knocked her off her base. So uh, yeah, I need to leave her there a bit to stand back up while she sets all over again. So we'll just leave her there doing her thing. And we'll come back to him. Um, these pieces are going to sit over the top like that. And I think they're going to get in the way of the arms. So I'm going to stick the arms on first. And this one, instead of being flat with the lantern that way, it turns that way. So it's in that plane, not that plane with the model. And I've already done the dry fit, 
left, so it's nice and rigid now. But in a, a similar way to the legs, I need to be careful not to uh, or to hide the joints, and line those up particularly the outside joints, because obviously they're the ones you're going to see more of. And he's got a bit of cement on his back, so he's a bit tacky, but that's going to be covered up very shortly, so that's fine. So there's him with his lantern, which swings him out that way a little bit. And then we've got a similar situation with his sword arm that comes out that way and again I've checked the dry fit on this and it only really fits in one angle which is sort of hung at his side like that and move those out of the way so there you can see it's sort of at his side and almost hanging straight down. Again, just need to hide those joints, but you're not really going to see them anyway. So let's put those bits on the front. Again, that only really fits in one position and it just sort of slides into the shape of his body. And these pieces will go over the top and yeah, they match up and join to give him a, a complete cowl. Or cape over all his shoulders. like they've designed that one to fit in such a way that the joins are where their natural sort of folds in the cloth anyway so that's worked quite nicely There's only two pieces to him left and one piece for her the first one is this piece which has a little peg on the bottom that fits into a little hole on top of his neck and that's basically a bandana or a scarf, so we'll go ahead and put that straight in. And I can't find the socket. Have I put it on backwards? I have. So that went straight in once I knew what I was doing. And obviously his head goes on the top. And I'm going to give him one quick last minute check just to make sure that I haven't left any pieces on because that's quite a delicate piece. So once it's in place, it's going to be awkward to, uh, to pose or to trim. Just line that up and that's our male intimacy survivor complete. She's a little more stable now, so it's just a case of slotting her arm in. And again, it's got that half arm on this piece and half arm on there. So that's just going to go over the top. If you sort of carrying it over a shoulder, not that you can see my, my arms, but and it looks like 
looks like she's got armbands where the joint is so again that should hide them quite nicely just need to make sure to line those pieces up especially on the edges where you can see them And that, I would say, is our two intimacy survivors finished. And as far as models go, they are far more interesting and involved than the starter ones. Thanks for watching. As ever, do me a favour, hit the thumbs up button on this video, particularly if you found it useful. And as ever, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Help me take over YouTube one subscriber at a time so you don't miss any more of this series. And check out my other series as well. So that's Super Hamster out. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.